is Amy. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you a, a different technique. Uh, one that you can do, I don't know, hopefully it would help you if you're having a hard time actually creating flowers and getting the feel. So I'm hoping that what I'm going to show you will help you a little bit and not, not confuse you. But I'm going to give it my best. I am going to be using a number 8 and a number 10 A Magic Flat Brushes. I will be using a number 8 Deerfoot Stippler and a dotting stylus. I'm also going to just be using the back end of a paintbrush to do a center dot and you'll see why it doesn't matter what you use. You can use any, any tool that you want or any object that you like to make dots with. I'm going to be using Thicket, another color that I haven't had for a while and I absolutely love this for leaves is Forest Moss. And this one is School Bus Yellow which is very similar to the Moon Yellow that I use but it's enamel instead of the multi-surface Wicker White. And this is a new one that I'm understanding is new to the enamels and it's tea berry. Very pretty color. I absolutely love it. And all of my paints are folk art paints, a mixture of the multi-surface and the enamels. Actually most of them today except for the thicket, all of them are the enamels. All right, let's go ahead and get started. I am going to be using the number 10. On my paper I actually did five blooms but I'm going to probably just start out here with three because my surface is not nearly as large as the paper that I was doing or working on. I'm going to take the end of this brush and top it into the yellow and I'm going to start out by I just want to kind of randomly put these on here. don't want to put them out too far because I want to make sure I get them on the bottle. I mean it's on the front of the bottle. I should say they're all beyond the bottle. but And I'm just doing this center right now as just a basic guideline. I don't even know why I'm going over it again because I don't need to. The next step is going to be take the number 10. I am going to double load it. I just like to tap each side of my brush into the paint and then do my blending strokes and I'm sorry I'm not getting this on the camera but the way I have my camera set up right now it's not real conducive to getting all this in. Sorry about that. I'll do the best I can here. Alright so I'm just doing I can since I have them fairly close I can do the, the blending strokes in between them and just keep going into whichever color I want to add more to blend do the same thing over here blend it back and forth and you normally are supposed to try to get at least three quarters of the bristles full of paint. Alright so I'm going to go ahead and start because right now what I'm doing is just putting a little mark like that, a little mark like that and just going around it in fours. Just going to have four petals. You can have more. Again this is just more of an instructional uh, just to show you a way that you can create the petals and hopefully it helps those that may, might be struggling with creating petals for flowers. Alright, so once I've done that, I'm going to come back in here and just kind of blend my brush and I'm hoping I can, because I'm a lefty, a lot of times my hand gets in the way. So basically I'm going to start at the top here, I'm going to push my brush down to the side and then swing it around. I'm going to come back over here, do the same thing, and swing it around. Now once you've done that, you, know, you have some basics to work with here. And obviously you're not going to leave it just like that. But you're going to come back in and you're going to put, put some more paint on your brush, more than likely. Uh, fill it in. You can just leave it once you do this part. Uh, but the more paint you have, 
the better coverage you have on your on your item that you're painting, the more it's going to be durable and last longer as far as being handled, that type of thing. Now on this flower, because I'm doing just separate petals like this, not layering it, I would recommend, sorry, would recommend hitting it with a heat gun. I'm going to move this plate. It really bothers me. Hit it with a heat gun or a hair dryer and then go back over it again just to make sure that you have good coverage. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. This is just a guideline to follow. And I'm going to go back over this again. I am going to hit it with a dryer just to show you. You know, again, the lines that I made are just, just guidelines. If you want more petals, you can space them out differently. But you're basically just going, pushing it to the side, swinging it around and coming back up. And you're going to go back over it again, and do the same thing. And swing it around, okay? Simple. Just makes making the petals simple. And then just push it down, pull it back up. And do the same thing over here, pull it back up. Because you still have a chance to, you know, do blending if you want or, you know, straighten out the petals. It's just a guideline, as I mentioned to help you create the petals, okay? And then I'm gonna go ahead and do the next one. So you can pull it, push it down. You can come back over here, do the same thing, swing it out. You wanna swing it out more this way. You can do that too if you wanna have more of a, a point on your petal. You know, you can come back in here and do that. Swing it around. You know, painting on glass is definitely different than painting on paper, wood, or any of the other surfaces like that. It's definitely not the same. And a good product to, to practice on. It's inexpensive. You can either do glass that you can, like maybe you have an excess, it's kind of hard here, excess piece of glass that you want to work on, you can do that. Or you can do wax paper. I like wax paper because it's very affordable. And this one's giving me a little bit of a rough time here. But it's affordable and it is cheap. So you can actually come back in this way too. I was going to say, if you don't want to swing them around, you can actually come like we do on some of some of the strokes. And this is pulling up the paint, which is fine. You can come back down the other way. And what I mean by that is you can go like this. Got it out, swing it around and up. And if you want to turn your bottle, you can come back down like the opposite direction and swing it back and come back up like that, which like I said, I like kind of doing it the way I was doing it. It turns out better. Because on this, you can actually, you know, if you wanted to make one side one color, make the other side the other color so that you're maybe adding some interest to it. And these don't have to be spaced out perfectly when you're doing kind of like the hands on a clock. You can make them closer. You can add five petals instead of the four. You can actually even go over the top of these so that you have another layer of petals instead of just the, the four and the one layer. And you'll see how nicely this works with going back over it again. And you can use a smaller brush too. I probably 
could have gotten away with a smaller brush. But I was using this one on my sample, so that's why I stuck with it. Again, they're not perfect petals, but I like it to be more of a loose look. And it will be a little bit uh, neater once you go back over it with the next, the next layer. All right, so let's go ahead and give it some some dry time. All right, I went ahead and hit it with a hair dry or a heat gun, excuse me, and then I've gone over some of them. I'm going to show you because when you go over, you know, go over designs when you're doing gloss work, you have to be really careful because it can pull up the paint. So basically, now that you've gotten your shapes of your petals, you can go over it with your brush, just lightly going over it. And I just mean very, be very careful because it can cause it to come back up. It'll almost look like it's crackled. All right. And then I'm going to go back up this direction now. Now that I've gotten the design, the shape of my petal, I can go back up the opposite side. Instead of going this way and coming back down, I can go up it and, and just give it another coat. Again, this makes it more durable as opposed to the way it looks right here. That is okay coverage, but it's not it's not the best. And look how much nicer these look. Now, if you wanted to maybe even do some more blending here, just lightly though. I am just barely touching it, just very lightly putting paint on here and just continuing to work it but not overwork it. Just got to be real careful. Alright, so we're almost finished with these and then I'll show you leaves are, the leaves that I use are just the basic one stroke pole leaves. See it just covers it. It's a thicker coating. When I bake this which this in particular I'm not going to be baking, it's my my video jar or bottle, but I'm just saying that when you bake it then it'll be just a nicer coverage, a harder surface so it won't scratch. Name with a bottle, you don't have to worry about it as much as you do like with a drinking glass. But you still want it. You still want it to be a design that stays and isn't easy to scratch. All right. So now I'm going to take my Deerfoot stippler and I'm just putting it into yellow. Now, when I do this, I am just. I'm not going to do anything fancy. I am just putting centers in. If you want to add a second color, you are more than welcome to do so. I am just doing yellow, just keeping it simple. I started with that initial dot to get my placement of my petals and nothing more. That was the only reason I had a dot in the center to begin with. Now if you wanted to just to use that as the center, you certainly may. Not an issue, not a problem. You can do whatever you want, right? Alright, so then what I'm going to do I like dots, if you follow me you know that. And I am just going to tap a few on each side, not going around it much, just something to give it a little bit of an accent. So it's just going to be kind of here and kind of over here. Let's see, let's do that one here. And you don't have to put a lot or you can put a ton whatever you want to do. That's the extent of it. Pretty easy, right? Okay. Next thing I'm going to do is take my number 8 brush. I'm going to double load it with my greens, my moss green, and my thicket. And I can dip it into a little bit of the school bus yellow if I want. I am going to put my stem in. When you do this, if you want to 
just do the leaves around your flowers and not put a stem in, perfectly fine. I like to have a stem, so that's what I'm doing. And I can make it however I want to make it. Pull a little bit of the purple, and I am going to touch a little bit of that tea berry into my leaves too. So basically you can have however many colors you want in your leaves, your vines, whatever you want to do. And I'm just going to come through here. I can even put a little white in them. I want them to show up a little bit better because I'm doing this on a green bottle. You can certainly do that. Make some more interesting to vary the colors. That was not blended enough. To vary the colors of your leaves you can create more interest in your design. I just I love this new color. Let me know what you think about the new color down in the comments. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. I think it's very pretty. Very pretty. Again, just very simple. If you're new to my channel, please know that my intentions with my channel is to encourage people to not be afraid to try to find their creative side. So I like to create very simple patterns for people to use and encourage that because I think it's important. I think if more people found outlets for for themselves they would be a lot happier. Especially if you know they have problems with depression or that kind of thing. I think it helps. And see so, yeah, how you just adding a little bit of a different color can actually make something stand out a little bit more. I like to do little pulls is what I call them. I'm not really sure what their true, true uh, name is or what I should actually be calling them. You know, tell me down below. Let's see, it's just, just very simple and yet pretty. I mean, just think about it. You know, Christmas is coming, holidays are coming, whatever you celebrate, and you could just make some simple little gifts for people. You know, heck, you could even do this with beer, beer bottles. Make them little, little, uh, oh my gosh, little vases, basically, for like single flowers or whatnot. And wouldn't that be kind of neat? I think so. And there's some pretty, pretty bottles out there, too. Alright, I'm going to leave it at that. Hope you like this. And if you have any questions, comments, please leave them down below. I hope giving you like another way of creating flower petals. Hopefully that, that suggestion helps. Please, oh, if you are frustrated or you find yourself getting frustrated because you can't do it or you feel like you can't do it, just get out some wax paper and practice. Your hands need to get the feeling of how to create something and once you do that you'll find that you can even draw it that way create it however you you know whatever is comfortable for you but your hand will get trained and it will know and be much easier for you to do it with a paintbrush alright thanks again for stopping by give me a big thumbs up if you like this video if you're new to my channel subscribe hit the notification bell before you leave, I do ask if you would be so kind as to share this video on your social network with all your family and friends. Just hit that share button underneath the video. It'll give you the options of where you want to share it, and you're good to go. It's pretty easy. All right, take care, stay safe and healthy, and you have a good one.